Hi, I'm Frank Farrell, software engineer at Aspect Software, and I'm going to talk about how my team tackled continuous deployment and a handy tool I developed to minimize how much we deploy on each commit. So just to give some context of uh, who we are, um, we're a team of three engineers. Um, it's one app with lots of deployable components. Um, so we have everything, Docker containers, databases, uh, and all our AWS, AWS infrastructure, so that all counts. And it's kind of a medium-sized project. So um, the big question for us, should we have one or many repositories for all this code? So the arguments for having uh, one repository is easier to share libraries, it's easier to do code reviews across modules, and it's easier to refactor across modules. On the other hand, um, having many, like a repository per deployable component, the big win is that it's easier to do uh, continuous deployment. And there's other benefits as well. So in the end, we decided to go on one big repo, and I'm just gonna take that as an assumption for the rest of the talk. So how do you do continuous deployment from one big repo? Why not deploy everything on every commit? Well, there's three problems, well, there's three things. There's, there's always gonna be some risk. It might be small, but there's gonna be some risk. It's gonna take time to build and deploy, do canary releases, everything. Uh, so we need something better. Um, so the safer we are, uh, the less afraid of deployments will be. The speedier uh, our deployments, the more of them we can do. And ultimately, what we need is precision. So I wrote this uh, great Gradle plugin called Blast Radius, and uh, on any given uh, build of your pipeline, it determines the smallest uh, necessary subset of uh, modules you need to deploy. So that's the green circle here. That's your Blast Radius. So for this commit or build run of the pipeline, we're just going to deploy those five components. So I'm just going to run through a, a, a kind of a, a toy example. This is a Gradle project. It has two libraries, library A, library B, and there's two deployable, uh, two deployable modules. So for a given commit, um, so we do the git diff, and we see that uh, foo.java is changed in library B, and a readme is changed in library A. So the tool figures out that, uh, well, uh, foo.java is deployable code, so we deploy its dependency, that's deployable one, but a readme doesn't count, so we don't need to deploy anything that depends on that. Then another scenario that bar.java changes in library A, and a unit test changes in library B. So um, we deploy uh, the things that depend on, on the bar.java code, but a unit test doesn't matter for anything. So that's, that's basically how it works. So then I analyzed our CD pipeline uh, running this uh, tool for the last eight months with about 200 builds to try and get some insights into our code base. So my hypothesis was that 20% of commits will cause 80% of module deployments. Well, so much for the theory. Um, uh, this graph is a, an account of commits that triggered X deployments. So you can see um, on the left, it does nothing where there's nothing to deploy. That's great. And on the far right, you can see um, it just decided we needed to deploy everything. And then uh, the, yellow, that's, that's, uh, the yellow and the green are the big wins. So the yellow is just deploys, it deploys a single module out of the set of 35. And then the green is that's the real, uh, it's less frequent than I expected, unfortunately, but it's the real advantage of the tool. So that's it just deploys a small subset of, of the modules. So the next question we ask is how often are individual modules changing? This one's it's more of a Pareto distribution, that's great. But you can see um, kind of it's uh, folk statistics, but there's a plateau in the middle and then we figured out from that that there's actually some hidden coupling between modules. So then how likely is it that any two modules are gonna be deployed together? So this is the coincidence of deployment. So the darker the line, uh, the more coupled two modules are in deployment. And you can see at the bottom, there's, a, there's an obvious group there. Um, so then I'm gonna hone in on our two most commonly deployed modules. So Terraform, that has all our, our AWS infrastructure. And this is surprisingly uh, not very coupled. So the question we asked there is, uh, did the tool influence commit behavior? Maybe. So then uh, look at the next most commonly deployed module, which is our API. And uh, you can see that it's pretty much coupled to every other module. And the question that we, ha we, we asked here is, could this indicate design flaws in our code? And it probably does. So the key takeaways uh, for me for that is that uh, the tool worked to keep our builds fast and precise. That's the main thing. Um, from the analyses, uh, hidden coupling probably means there's some design flaws in our code. But on the other hand, there's lots of positives for design and workflow. And then kind of more high, high level takeaways is that it's uh, maintaining a complicated pipeline is in itself time consuming. And if you're gonna keep all your uh, deployable code in one big, re one big repo, um, you really have to deploy everything concurrently. And the big takeaway is that simple tools can have a big impact. So um, you can get the code there, um, and I guess it's greater than Java, but it could be easily translated to your favorite language and build tool. So thanks for listening. <laughs>